Welcome everyone to a CUDA software worksheet tutorial. We're doing point slope form today and you're watching West Explains Best. Write the slope intercept form of the equation of each line. Now, point slope form. Oh, a lot of students don't like it and I'm trying to be an advocate of point slope form. I think it's a far superior form than slope intercept. But what can you do? I'm gonna try to explain it here the best I can to make you guys believers also. Oh, well, first I want to make this blue. Okay, so first we need to understand what is point slope form. And it is y minus y1 times the slope m times x minus x1. Okay, now what does all this mean? It's important to understand what these variables mean, so let's break this down. m, just like point slope form, is our slope. This is our rise over our run. This is the difference in y's over the difference in x's. And you find it by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is our slope. y1 is the y value of the point that's given. Okay, This is called point slope form. We already covered the slope part. Now we're covering the point part. The point is defined as x1 comma y1. All right. So these are the two things that you need to have. You need to have the slope, you need to have the point, and then as simple as that. The one thing that's tricky that causes students trouble is the minus, okay? it's I don't think it's a big deal, but a lot of students don't like it um, because they have a hard time when there's a negative point. So you have to be careful because of these minuses. That's the one area of caution I have. Otherwise, it is a super easy form to use. Okay, now this first question is asking to write the slope intercept form. It's good to be able to go back and forth between the two forms. Slope intercept obviously has its, its merits. Um, so understanding how to convert it into slope intercept form is also important. So how do you do that? Well, slope intercept form is just converting uh, the equation to have y by itself. So we're gonna try to solve for y and move everything else over to the other side. Before we do that, we should probably distribute this negative seven over four to both those terms, and then we can go from there. So we have negative seven uh, over four x, uh, times x is negative seven over four x. Then we uh, multiply it, whoops, not sure what happened there. Then we multiply it by, uh, let me, my goodness, I keep hitting that with my hand. Then we multiply it by negative seven over four times a negative four. Now, if you want, put it over one, and you have positive 28 over four, that's gonna equal seven. Okay, so 28 over four is seven, uh, and that is our answer there. So we're gonna do plus seven. So negative times negative equals positive, and it's plus seven, and we have y plus five. We're subtract five, subtract five. We only need to worry about combining like terms, so we get y equals negative seven over four x. That stays the same, there's no other like terms plus two, and there you go. Now this is useful because we know that this has a y-intercept of two. The slope we already knew before from the uh, point slope form. But the other thing is, and this is off script a little bit and off the directions, but what is it the point that it goes through? So we already know that the x1 is here, okay, located here. So where is x1 here? Let's go ahead and label it. This would be our x1, okay? Four would be our x1, not negative four, four, because remember the form is x minus x1. Now here for the y, to find y1, you see that it's a plus five. Well, what does that mean? Technically, that is y minus a negative five, okay? Because remember the form is y minus y1. Well, if it's plus, that means there must have been two negatives so it's negative five is our y1. That's the tricky part I was referring to uh, earlier. But this is important because point slope form tells you, oh, this line goes through that point. That's pretty important, okay? Slope intercept form is important because it tells you the y-intercept, it's two. It goes, crosses the y-axis at two. So both have their merits, but I just wanted to show how you would go about converting that. These other ones are fairly easy to convert. Like for example, let me do this one quick. You would distribute 2x minus 2 equals y plus 4. 
then you subtract four from both sides to get y equals two x minus six. So we get our y-intercept pretty quickly. If we were to get our point, it would be one comma negative four. Again, y minus a negative four. I'm going quickly because this is not the emphasis. Um, well, it will be later, but I just wanted to get to some tougher problems. So anytime you have uh, something like this, you may have the chance of running into some fractions, and this is the case here. So we have one-fifth x minus three over five, y plus three. So we need to subtract three from both sides. No, we won't have to worry about the x because it's not a like term, but we will have to worry about uh, getting the three into a like denominator. So I multiply by five over five to the three, and this turns into, this is how you do fractions. Not sure if you remember, negative three over five minus 15 over five. That's the same thing as equal to negative three. So now I have negative three minus uh, 15, that gives me negative 18 over five. So I get negative 18 over five, one fifth X minus that equals Y, there you go. Not super pretty, but that's what it is. Now, write the point slope form of the equation through the line. This is great stuff, okay? This is what's so powerful about point slope form is it's really easy to put into equation once you're given a point and a slope, obviously. So we write x1, y1, you gotta label that first, okay? So step one, you gotta label. And then number two, you plug in, that's it. It's as simple as that, plug in. So uh, slope, m, okay? And then we have y minus y1, three, and let's go, I guess this green, equals one fourth times x minus x1, that's two. It's as simple as that. Now it's not asking you for slope intercept form, so all you do is plug in and you're done. That's what I like about point slope form. It's really simple when uh, you're just trying to keep it in point slope form. Um, let's do one with a negative. So uh, let's go to number six and the other ones are pretty straightforward after that. So the first thing we do is we label x1, y1 and our slope. Okay, gotta make sure we identify our proper slope. Even if you're trying to find parallel and perpendicular lines, always identify that slope. Now we're just gonna plug it into the form. So we have y minus y1, one, equals negative one over two, okay, so far so good, times the quantity x minus, okay, this is where it gets tricky, negative four, okay? That's what I was talking about earlier. If we have a negative value for our x1 or our y1, we have to subtract it still. And what does that result in? Well, now we have to simplify. You don't leave it as two negatives next to each other. So we simplify it to x plus four. So this is the part that confuses people a little bit just because they see that plus and they think, oh, my x value must be four. No, it's negative four because keep in mind we're subtracting. And then they see the negative one, they're thinking, oh, my y, my y1 must be negative one. No. It's because we're subtracting, our y value is positive one, okay? Oh, this one's pretty interesting just because we have a slope of zero. So I'm just gonna do it in purple. We have our x1, y1, m is zero. So we're gonna have y plus two, minus a negative two is plus two, zero times, and it doesn't even matter what we put here and I'll show you, okay? So then we have y plus two equals zero. Technically that's in point slope form, but we could solve for uh, y to get it in slope intercept form. This is a horizontal line Write the point slope form of the equation of the line through the given points Okay, so this time we're not given m and this time we're given two points. So what do we call x1 and y1? It doesn't matter. So we can call this one x1 y1. We can call this one x2 y2 It doesn't matter which one we call which as long as the ones and the twos stay together The first thing we'll need to do is as I suggested earlier. We need to find our slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we do four minus a negative three over negative five minus a negative three. We get seven over, I think that's negative two, and that is our slope. Okay, so we get y minus, now, here's the thing. I'm gonna leave that blank for now. Equals seven, and I don't like to have the negative in the bottom, I always like putting it in the top. And then we have x minus, and I'm gonna leave that blank. Okay, so what can we put in these blanks? Well, we labeled our x1, y1, negative three and negative three. So we could put, we could put negative three and negative three in for x and y. You would not be wrong, however, to also put 
uh, 4 and negative 5 because those that is also a point on the line okay if that's confusing for you just stick with x1 y1 but I'm just saying you can use either point and it would be right okay and as you solve for the equation uh, for slope intercept form you would get the same equation regardless if you chose the negative 3 or the negative 5 for x or the negative 3 or the 4 for y so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the negatives here just so we can get practice changing this uh, to positives. So we get y plus three equals negative seven over two times x plus three. A way to think of it is we just do essentially the opposite of those signs in our point slope. That's how some people like to think of it. Okay, let's go to uh, this one here, number 13. Okay, we have x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, now we have um, our, let's do our slope. So we do y2, negative 5, minus a negative 3. Then we have 1 minus 1. So in the top, we get, was that, negative 2 again. And then we have 0. Okay, an alarm should be going off. Okay, because we can't plug in this into our equation. This is an undefined slope. So what does that mean? That means we have to put, that means it's a vertical line. And we have to put it into a special form, which is x equals a number. In this case, we see that our x stayed the same as 1. So x equals 1 is our equation, and that's it. There's no alternative. That's technically, I guess, slope, intercept, point, slope, whatever. But that is important to know that anytime we get an undefined slope, it's a vertical line, and it's going to be a special form. Okay, last section. I know this is kind of a longer video, but it's important to see all these different... Uh, ways of solving point slope let's go to this one let's go to 17 okay again we're given two points here but you don't have to do the y2 minus y1 because we can just count because we're given the coordinate plane so i know my rise is negative three and my run is one two three four positive four so now i have my slope okay and now i can pick which point i want for my point slope form I'm going to pick the easier of the two. This one looks easy because it's got it's right on the, the y-axis. So what is that point? That is a point 0, comma, negative 1. Let's go ahead and plug in. Well, first let's label. This is my x1. That is my y1. I'm not sure what's going on with my Apple Pencil, by the way. Uh, so let's continue. We have y minus a negative 1 equals our slope, negative 3 over 4, times x minus 0. Well, that's going to turn into very easily y plus 1. Now let's change it purple. We get y plus 1 equals email equals negative 3 over 4 times x because this we distribute and then we get 0. Negative 3 over 4x. Now, this is the cool part about point slope. It's so easy to get it into slope intercept most of the time. So you get y equals, my goodness, y equals negative 3 over 4, negative 3 over 4 x minus 1. And there's our answer in, sorry, it's just asking for point slope form. That would be point slope form. This would be slope intercept. So you can see both forms and how easy it is uh, for both. Um, that's all I got for you today. All these ones, you can do the similar process, or if you want, you can label the points and do x y2 minus y1 for the slope over x2 minus x1. Um, but it's fairly simple. I like point slope of, of form a lot, and I hope after this video you like it too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.